Hello, 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 everyone. Hi, Cristiano. Hey, Joyce. I just tweeted, so um, if anyone wants to retweet me, feel free to go ahead. Um, my name is Joyce. I'm a developer advocate with Postman. I'm over here in San Francisco, and we have a special guest today. I'm Cristiano uh, Beta. I'm a developer advocate at Box, uh, based out of London. So uh, nice, nice little time difference we got going on. Thank you for being our special guest. I feel like um, I met you a couple years ago, and uh, I'm very excite excitable. I am an American by culture, um, and I remember one of the first things you said to me was, and you're Dutch, right? Yes. Yeah, like we were talking about something, and you were like, hi, like real like, hey. And I was like, you said something about how Americans are so like overly enthusiastic and Dutch. If you say something's good, it like really means like you're excited about it. I, I always have to up the uh, the octane a little bit when I'm when I'm talking sometimes because uh, often like especially Germans and Dutch people like people think we're grumpy and we're we're not. We're we're perfectly happy and fine. It's just when you ask us a question, we'll just say yes. Oh, what's wrong, Cristiano? <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. Okay, so we have um, actually a pretty beefy uh, thing that we're going to tackle today. Let's just say machine learning. But before we jump into that, let's start with what we always start with, uh, in case you missed it. In case you missed it. Cristiano, do you sing? Or... Uh, no, no. No? Okay. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, I, I, only at Christmas. Well... We'll have to invite you back again then. Um, so we have a few things on the um, docket for in case you missed it, where we just talk about some neat things that you might care about. So you should see my screen right now. And I am on the Postman YouTube channel. Yes, we have a YouTube channel. Um, and we just published this blog, uh, this blog, this video. I'm going to go ahead and copy the link address and drop it here in the chat. Um, so if you didn't know, uh, I think we're going to be working with some REST APIs later today, I assume. Something mm -hmm. REST-ish. Yeah, so people know Postman as a REST client, but it's really just an H API client that handles anything over HTTP, which includes GraphQL. And recently we released, not recently, it's been out for a while, but we just came up with this video. Um, we released some uh, features that make it a little bit more friendly to work with GraphQL. So check out that video if you care about GraphQL. Oh, uh, and Arlami, Arlami is here in the background once again doing our broadcast from London as well. He was really excited about this. So I'm going to switch over to Postman. And you can see that I'm in Postman Canary. I have dark mode just so I can keep Canary and regular Postman clear in my head. But um, I don't know, Cristiano, have you ever used the tests tab here or the yeah, pre request? Yeah, we do. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay, so we talk about this in almost every live stream, but these are areas where you can write JavaScript. Uh, you can write code to execute before or after this request that we're working on here. And so this is only in Canary right now. Soon it'll come to regular Postman. But right now, if you were to type in, and I, I'm a little bit uh, proud but ashamed to say that this live stream inspired this feature. If I start typing, now we have autocomplete. The engineer saw us fumbling around, and I'm like, is that variable or variables? And it's like, OK, it's variables um, dot get. And OK, it takes these parameters. So if you're familiar with um, the Monaco um, data editor, this is from Monaco. And in fact, in a few weeks, we have a special um, Postman engineer, Kamal, who's going to be joining us, um, talking about the history of the Monaco editor and how it's getting rolled into the Postman interface. So this is. This is actually pretty sweet. Um, you should be able to code much, much faster. You should be able to discover things. Like, so that's the PM API that you're probably familiar with. But if the deprecated one, you can see there's one method on the old, old timey Postman uh, API that's set next request. So that's pretty neat. Code auto completion in these tests area or the scripting areas is something in case you missed it. Or actually, it's not in case you missed it. It's just out on Canary now. Oh, and this last one is a little bit of a self plug. But Cristiano, if you want to follow along, if you have Postman open um, on your machine, you can do this too. But um, I'm going to go to the new button here. And if you tab over to templates, 
I'm going to move my body over here. So hopefully that's a clue. If you type in hue, a few weeks ago, Arlami and I uh, unboxed the Philips Hue bulb. That's a Dutch company. Philips, mm -hmm. uh, I learned. Dutch, definitely, yeah. Dutch. I've been to the factory. So if you go and turn on the Hue light in Joyce's kitchen, you can pull it in and um, <laughs> you can turn on this light that is prominently on display right behind me. We have a production um, production URL up and running. So feel free to turn on and off and change the lights in the background in my kitchen. Okay, so that's all we have for in case you missed it. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. Well, let's go to side by side for a sec, Arlami, if you wouldn't mind, thank you. Um, so, oh, did I miss all these chatters? <laughs> Do we have questions? can already use it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I should drop a link. Um, while you're talking, Cristiano, I'll drop a link of that Hue collection in the chat. But mm -hmm. um, something that uh, we've talked about in the past, um, about in just like over the last few months, you created a box collection mm -hmm. to help people experimenting with your tech um, learn about and use the Box API, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh, we used to have a, uh, a Postman collection that was very much handwritten by uh, uh, by somebody who who long left before I before I joined Box. Uh, and and one of the things we did um, somewhere in the last year was kind of auto generate our Postman collection over of our Open API spec, and like vastly kind of like simplify the way you kind of get your access token into into your Postman app because we have a rather complicated way of like getting you to set up your box app and then bringing those credentials in. So we basically just made it a quick start guide and you just follow it through, click the buttons and at the end of it, you've got your collection, you've got your environment, you've got everything set up to start making uh, making API calls. So are we gonna be using that collection today? Yes, yes, Okay. I, I will be. I've, I, spent, I spent yesterday adding some extra kind of like methods in there that I realized were missing. <laughs> so they're now in there, uh, but uh, yeah, they weren't they weren't actually all in there yesterday. So uh, now they are. And one of the things that I think you're somewhat famous for, not, not to say that you're not very famous for this, but like something that people know you about is I saw you give a talk once where you do a teardown where you consume somebody else's API <laughs> and you just try to do hello world or try to do something. Yeah, I thought I'd use that Dutch grumpiness to just like yeah. kind of like complain about other people's APIs. Uh, yeah, I did this at uh, a couple of these um, uh, DevRel cons, which are these these conferences uh, that I think we've met at quite a few times, uh, and um, they're kind of fun because in inherently, like if you think about it, it's it's really easy for somebody working with APIs to kind of get lost halfway through kind of trying to use a product. Uh, so the, the whole goal of those talks was basically just to kind of like show how easy it is uh, for people to just hit their head against the wall. Uh, so just taking a 20 minute talk and just uh, we, 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 we literally pulled a, an API out of a hat, like a name out of a hat. And I think um, we, did, we did a few, I've done a few of them and then just try to use it. And it's just hilarious how easy it is for you to kind of like not see a button. And then the entire audience is like, it's in the top right, like there's the yeah. button that you're looking for. I'm like, oh yeah, sorry, I didn't see it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really fun. Yeah, but if you didn't see it, like hundreds of other people didn't see it. So it's really like extreme usability testing. Um, mm -hmm. So I've seen that before and it's so exciting because it's like who would volunteer their baby to get like torn apart by in public. And I wanted to do that um, to just throw some APIs at you and watch you go through it. But then it's like yeah. machine learning, I mean, like maybe machine learning's not your wheelhouse. So we did do a Twitter poll to say, hey guys, which um, API should we work with? Do you remember the three that we suggested? I, th I think we, we, we threw out a couple of different ones. I had a bit of a, an early browse to see which ones were at least like, looked like they were Doable. Relatively easy to do, doable, like still more on two. I think we picked one from Google, one from Microsoft, and one from AWS. AWS. Uh, and I think the AWS one was like a text extraction one. The Google one was like um, kind of like image recognition. And uh, no, the Microsoft one was good Microsoft. image recognition. I don't know what the Google one was exactly that we decided to line like on. Maybe audio, audio extraction or something? Speech to text, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I have the one that I wanted you to work on, but we left it up to Twitter to decide. Um, and if we have any machine learning experts in the chat. I don't know. What if people saw the twi tweet and they were like, oh, machine learning, we're going to do some hardcore machine learning. So these are machine learning engineers that are tuning in. If we have any experts, please chime in with your expertise or at least just like let us know what we're doing wrong if we're doing anything wrong. Um, so what are we doing today? So I think the one that won out, uh, the way you told me, was the Microsoft <laughs> one, right? So we actually had a tie, but um, I hadn't voted. So I, yeah, I the Microsoft uh, <laughs> image recognition, I believe, is Wait, what we're Did we get to. an exact tie, or was it like the percentage you sort of sent? I don't understand how Twitter polls work, but it was a percentage tie. Ah, so okay. It has to be exact, right? So, so you get the you get the deciding vote. That's a very good idea. I, I like it. Okay, so image recognition. So you work at Box. You guys don't do machine learning, do you? We don't. We don't do out of the box machine learning. No. So for for those of you who are not familiar with, with Box, uh, we're uh, an enterprise. Um, sorry, a cloud content management system. So you can store your 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 files with us, and then access those ideally from kind of like any place where you're trying to access your files. So your mobile, your desktop, but also other applications. Um, so we have a lot of like, you know, big organizations, big companies who store kind of raw data with us and then they want to kind of like extract some information from those files. Uh, for example, we have police departments who kind of store photos, for example, with us of cars and then they want to extract license plate something from it. So a while ago, one of the things that we introduced is this idea of um, kind of a way to kind of start processing the, this data with these external kind of like machine learning providers. Because there's, I think five years ago, there was maybe like a handful of them. Now there's like dozens and every every one of the big, big players, as, as, as we saw in the, um, uh, in the survey, Microsoft, Google, uh, uh, um, uh, Amazon, they all have their own kind of like off-the-shelf machine learning technology, so it's it's never been easier to just like start plugging those files that you store in Box into kind of these systems and kind of start extracting that data. Well, I think Arlami is actually our the Postman resident machine learning expert. So instead of him, Excellent. you have me. <laughs> you have me. So I am um, not an expert on this. I am not an expert on this. Like it's it to me, it's more of a hobby, and it's um, it's just really interesting to see. Um, I say I'm not an expert on it. I, I studied um, I studied computer science with with a variation of artificial intelligence, um, but quite a while ago. And it's just fascinating to see how much the uh, the industry has kind of moved on. Where it used to be, you have to spin up your own kind of like your 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 your, your own systems, etc. You need to do a lot of training. But these days, like so much, you can just grab off the shelf and start playing with, and it's all just behind. You know, the thing that Postman loves is just an API that you can just hit, throw a file at, and get some data back. It's really cool. That means really anybody can, quote unquote, do machine learning. Yeah. If you know how to make an API call, you can use machine learning in your projects. It's, it's really cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get started. OK. So does that mean so we, you, we should to my mark screen? Yeah, you should share your screen. So, thank you, Arlami. Yes, so Arlami just dropped the link to the collection to change the light in my kitchen. So <laughs> it's right here. Is it actually, I can't see, is it actually right behind you right now? Yeah, it's like my body will cover it if I don't like squinch to the side. <laughs> so has it come on and off yet? I, my face is very, very small and I can't quite see it, so. Okay, so, so maybe it hasn't, okay, maybe so the chat. Anybody listening is make this happen, right? This, this yeah, has to happen. Make this happen. <laughs> um, excellent. So, so, um, um, so the thing, the thing I want to play with for this call is to play with this this concept that we have, which is called box skills. Uh, so, if you're if you have a box account, uh, you can uh, go there. Uh, there should be like a little Dev Console link in the bottom left of your screen. If you don't have a Box account, you can go to sorry to developer.box.com, and you can basically sign up for uh, there. There will be a sign up link there if you haven't signed up before, and you can sign up for a free developer account. 
Um, in this case, I'm going to go to the Def Console. Uh, I only have one app, which is my Postman app, which is what I've used to set up my collection. Um, and the thing we want to do today is like use box skills. So uh, we're going to create a new app, and we're going to create a custom skill. So to give you a bit of an idea of what a custom skill is, um, it's basically it's a webhook that gets sent to a server somewhere, right? And then uh, you in that webhook is basically uh, enough data for you to extract the file from Box, send it off to some machine learning system. Uh, and then there's enough in there to then also kind of write some metadata to a file. So is this uh, kind of like an uh, Alexa skill? Like, it's a bit like an Alexa skill. Yeah, it's very much like um, it's just a call and response kind of thing. You. <laughs> You, you do something, has it triggered now? Oh no, your lab's yeah. triggered. I thought yeah. your Alexa was And off. Cristiano, I don't know how many live streams you've been, but it's pretty like disjointed. So I do see a question. Um, so apologies for interrupting you there. Yeah, yeah. I do see a question in the chat. Um, uh, Postman Canary, we saw we talked about that in, in case you missed it. That's just like the early version. So it's the canary in the coal mine. If the canary dies and something is wrong and the miners better get out. Um, but we'll drop a link to the um, place where you can Thank you. I could, actually, that was so bright that I could see that coming like from behind my head. Um, so that's that's Canary. But go ahead, Cristiano. No, oh, that's awesome. Like uh, I, I love, I, love uh, I have a, a Chrome Canary installed and stuff like that. Yeah, if yeah. If you're a web yeah. developer, having the Canary versions around is always is always very uh, useful to kind of get the, all the new stuff early. Um, so uh, where was I? So box skills. So. Uh, Essentially, what it does is like as soon you can attach it to a folder. So as soon as you upload a file into that folder, you can basically have it get processed by some uh, external service. And I think I already processed this one in the past. Uh, oh no, I didn't. Yeah. So this is this is some weird photo, and I, I want to see what it detects in this photo, uh, just because it's a silly <laughs> photo. Uh, um, uh, so I uploaded this earlier. Uh, it's. Not it doesn't actually have any. I thought I assembled some data, but basically here on the side you could get some extra metadata. Uh, we, we support a couple of different kinds of metadata. Basically, like you can have a, a set of labels, a set of keywords uh, attached to the side. Uh, we have a really cool one where you can put stuff on a timeline. So if you detect faces, for example, in a video, you can say, oh, this face appears from here to there. This face appears from from this time stamp to that time stamp. Um, kind of really cool stuff like that. Uh, as well as like a transcript one. So if you have a trans, if you have an audio file, you want to transcribe it. You can have the transcription kind of exist in the sidebar here next to the audio file. And one of the cool things with that is is that then, that then also becomes available in search. So a user can search for the text that's kind of in that metadata and find the right files that kind of belong to it. So it can enhance your search. So yes. Once you set up the skill on this um, like directory. You said once you upload it, it's just going to continue doing um, the analysis for every all the contents in there. Yes. Neat. Yes. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna delete this file and kind of upload a uh, a new version of this. Uh, let's see. Hey, Matavik. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Um, cool. So let's go set up a skill, right? So let's give this uh, this this one a name. And seeing as my last name is better, I call everything. Better because it's just a good pun. Uh, there we go. Um, so this Do we is need the secret a... shield? Nah, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. You can't do anything with this client ID as okay. is. Uh, plus, this is a demo account. So if you manage to get, if you manage to copy any of the access tokens you're going to see or anything like that, you're going to have access to exactly the photos that you just saw, the, which you can all pull off of the internet for free. So it's a bit of a <laughs> bit of a stretch. Okay. Um, so we, we have this little kind of like a sample dash list test kind of thing. So I have my media files folder here, right? And I have a, I select the one that I just uploaded. And basically what this would do is this would send this payload, this webhook to whatever we're going to fill in here as the invocation URL. So we could send this to a Postman's webhooks kind of API, right? Yeah. Uh, we that up. So we actually, I don't think we're doing that today, right? No, I've, I don't have any experience with it. So uh, unless you know exactly over the top of your head uh, how to do it. But also, I think 
at the end of the day, we kind of want this to run as a as a full server so that we can kind of at the end show how it works completely automatic. So I'm okay. just going to do it locally in some JavaScript. So if anybody uh, is curious about the Postman webhooks, we do have a past stream where we talked about how to put a Postman URL there for the invocation URL and send a payload to Postman. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to run this locally, it sounds like. Yeah. So let me let me copy this out, right? Let me copy this into uh, into the Postman. I, I tried to flip your your lights on and off before, but I didn't didn't quite get there. Uh, so, sorry, I'm just opening a new code window. Uh, let me one second. Come on. So this is essentially what we end up with. It's a it's a pretty large payload, uh, but the important bits in here, for example, is we have the source in here, which is a file with this ID, right? So we know what the file that it's a file. We know that it has this name. We know which enterprise it belongs to. But what we've done that's really interesting is um, in this response, there's basically two access tokens in here, a read and a write one. And essentially, you can use these to basically like um, access the files without actually having to um, having to authenticate, go through OAuth two, go through JWT, and everything like that. Basically, any service can listen to this and use the tokens that are in this body to to basically do whatever they need to do. So if we copy this, right, and again, don't worry too much about uh, shielding this. Um, so this is our collection, right? Uh, and this is kind of uh, tied to my box demo account. But what I can do is I can um, I can find the uh, the file. Uh, let's see, download a file. So we have a nice download a file endpoint, and uh, I can change the access token to this value that I just received, and I can set the um, ID of the file to uh, this ID. And basically, what that's going to call is going to call api.box.com and then our content kind of API with that access token attached to it. And ideally, that should return the file that we have in, in Box. Yay! So that pulled back. Um, now, what's cool is we can pass this same URL, right? The whole URL with kind of the file ID filled in and with this, this domain filled in. We can pass this to, um, to any API that basically takes a URL. Uh, so a lot of these machine learning APIs, uh, the thing that you pass to them is either like binary data, right? Where you say, hey, here is the file that I want you to process. But often that's a bit of a, that's a bit convoluted where you have to like download a file to your service, like whether or not you're running that in a serverless environment or you're running that on a server and then take that file and then send that out to, mm -hmm. to a machine learning API. It's a bit silly to do that. Why not just give the machine learning API a link that where they can directly kind of download the file from. That okay. way the file never, like especially when you're dealing with like secure kind of like sensitive content, you don't necessarily want that content to go through uh, an, an AWS Lambda function or something like that. You'd rather it only go kind of like from the two, between the two kind of like approved services that you're working with. Yeah, you're just taking out one extra step. Yeah, yeah. Plus dealing with binary data is <laughs> a real pain. So like let the machine learning API kind of like <laughs> figure that one out, right? Mm -hmm. So this is exactly why we have, um, why we kind of implemented these two tokens. So we have a read token and a write token. So that way you can kind of like give a, give a link to a machine learning provider that is um, that only allows them to basically download the file, but not kind of like delete the file, update the file, yeah. <laughs> or, or do anything else with it. Um, do, do we have any more questions uh, in the chat? Or I feel like machine learning experts should also uh, volunteer their identity, not like their true identity, but just <laughs> raise your hand and say like, yeah, I know something about machine learning um, because this is. Well, we could all be noobs. We could all just be learning about it. So, yeah. So I think the API that we we were going to look at is the um, uh, what was it called? The Microsoft Azure Vision 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 API is that what it was called? Something like that. Computer Vision API. Right. 
So they have a they have a whole set of like computer vision APIs that do a, a bunch of different things. Um, it's been interesting. Uh, I haven't fully played with it yet, but I I uh, had a I at least signed up for an Azure account, which I didn't have until <laughs> until a few days ago. And uh, uh, if we had done this as one of these like twenty minute kind of like demos at a uh, at a conference. Uh, we would have not finished the sign up process. Oh no. <laughs> so it's good well, that I went through that first. If we have any Azure folks in the chat, that's some good <laughs> feedback for onboarding. <laughs> yeah, it's you have to set up a, an account and a pricing plan and all that kind of stuff, even oh. though you're in a in a free pricing plan. Uh, it's just a bit uh, it was a lot of um, a lot of different a lot, a lot of difficulty in there. So is what we're uh, doing today is that is that uh, can we do it on a free account? Yes, I think so. I think so. I think you get a. You basically get. Uh, I think when you sign up for a free account, you get like a hundred fifty dollars of free credit. Uh, mm -hmm. So that gives you a lot of API calls to make to make basically to 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 these um, API endpoints. I actually don't know what the pricing on this is. Let's see, computer vision pricing. I bet it's expensive. Ah. Uh... So seventy four cents per thousand transactions to, for example, detect faces. To do OCR is like one eighteen pounds per thousand transactions. Per thousand. That is, yeah. So that's quite a lot. Like if you have a thousand files, it's going to cost you like, you know, it's going to cost you maybe like a dollar fifty or something. Um, that is, I mean, it's not. It's not crazy expensive, but if you have like millions of files, <laughs> then it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. it gets expensive very quickly. Um, interesting. I, don't, I have no idea how this compares to like any of the other providers, um, but it's kind of cool. They do they do quite a few kind of like different things. They do um, so here they 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 allow you to do things like uh, object extraction. So it will tell you like, hey, there's a person over here. There's a person over there. So you give it a you give it a photo and it will give you a rectangle kind of like of where it thinks there's a person and then it says oh there's a train here a subway train and it gives you kind of the dimensions of where it thinks that that exists. Um, I think that's one of the features that they have. Um, I think they also from from looking at it earlier I don't know where I saw that uh, they also had like um, celebrity kind of detection maybe that's this one. Is that a celebrity? No, I don't know. Oh. Maybe maybe it was a celebrity. No, I think this is just uh, this is just detecting kind of uh, people and users and stuff like that. I, uh, I saw this demo once at an API conference. I think IBM has a similar um, uh, product. Or, 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 I might be mixing up my big companies, but I think it was IBM. And I was walking past, um, and they were filming me, and they identified my age, my happiness level. And I was like very offended because the age wasn't right at all. <laughs> and my happiness, it's like I have a resting like face of a certain level of happiness. So I feel like these models are only as good as you train them. Yeah, so I think that's that's one of the key takeaways here, right? Is like the um, uh, the predictions are only as good as the models that you're using. And I think what what we're using and, and if we're going to try this now like what we're going to use is basically the off the shelf solution but i think where where it really gets interesting is when you can train your own models mm. so if you for example um we have a customer who basically produces um uh kind of uh, uh farming equipment and they basically have a large library of like different machines and, they, and the photos of the machines and they've basically just trained their own model and basically anytime somebody uploads new kind of like marketing material it automatically gets tagged with the model that it's kind of like referring to just because it it basically they've trained their own model to to detect which machines they're referring to yeah yeah sounds really boring farming farming equipment but you know uh they're they're they run into the same scale issues as everybody else where they have a lot of files and they don't can't find any of them. So they want to have like better metadata associated with them. Hi, November Sailor. Hey again. We have a no-code AI platform that you can use to power up custom box skills. A box partner. Who? Drop drop us a link. Who is this? Who is this? November sailor. You can't dox people on here, but just drop us a link to the um to the tech. <laughs> 
I'm still not seeing the chat. That's a bit weird. Okay. Um, doing that a refresh. Yeah. No. Twitch Twitch UI sometimes you have to refresh to see the latest thing. Yeah. That's okay. Okay, right, so let's let's I think we talked enough about what it does. Let's give it a try, right? So Okay, let's uh, do it. Uh, it keeps doing this to me for some reason. Don't know why. There we go. Whoa. What does this do? Create a computer vision service. Let's give it a service. So let's go the better box skill. <laughs> uh, uh, the I first time one. I met you, I wanted to make a pun about your name, but I some people get really annoyed by like because they hear it all the time. I know. I, I lean in. I lean into it. It's it's uh, totally the thing that I, I, I. You know, when you have when you have the last name, you have to use it, right? Uh, let's see. Let's do Western Europe because that's where I am. Let's do it for free. Twenty calls per minute. Five calls. Five K calls per month. I think that's going to be enough for this demo. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, create a new resource group. Box skill. Okay. Cool. Create. Oh, November Sailor applied. They're at Hydra. Can you see the chat now, Cristiano? No, I still can't for some <laughs> reason. It's Hy just not Hydra. It's... Interesting. Yeah. Some reason is it twitch.tv slash postman or get postman? Get postman. Uh, I think that's why I'm in the wrong group. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't, can't. we weren't quick enough to get postman. No, and I think cool. Okay, I'll keep the chat open over there. Uh, how do we go now? What do we do now? You just Next created steps. a new computer vision service. Yes. Well, that's pointless. <laughs> uh, let's see. Microsoft computer vision. I can't type. Uh, quick start. Oh, uh, got it. Whatever. Let's see. Documentation. Here we go. Start coding. We can get here. We can get. We can get there. Come on. Uh, reference API. Let's see what we can do with this. Ooh. Okay. Not very pretty, but <laughs> but we can, we can use this. So we have a, a a post API where we can analyze an image. Right. Let's let's have a look at this. So extracts a rich set of visual features based on the image content. Uh, endpoint URL, I think that's this list here, right? They seem to have lots of like local APIs. That's very cool. It's good if you're dealing with latency and stuff like that. Uh, oh, and then we can detect a couple of different visual features. Detects if the image is pornographic, brands, categories, Color, oh, that's really cool. Description, faces, image type. Oh, oh, we should have totally, kind of... we should have made hot dog, not hot dog. We should have just made hot... that app on this live stream. <laughs> and it would just like you upload hot dogs into Box and it will just tell you whether or not it's a hot dog or not <laughs> yeah. a hot dog. Yeah, uh, so which, which of these APIs will we need for that? Uh, Tags the image with a detailed list of related to the image content. Let's do the tags one. Tags, Let's see okay. if what, we, what we can do with that, right? So, so I think you just call that API with the URL for the image. So we've just seen how to make that image work, right? I think you can also upload the actual binary data. We're not going to do that. That's too much work. Uh, so we have the URL here. Right, so we need to do that, and then we need to make an API call to. Okay, let's pick my European West Europe. There we go. Go to Postman. Right, we can do this. Uh, it was a post, right? Yeah, and then we have what is it? Slash Vision Three Analyze, and then it's the visual features that we want. 
So visual features. And then we set tags, right? And I think, so we can details, we can get celebrities and landmarks. Oh, interesting. As well as like what language we wanted to return in. We'll just keep it as English. Uh, because there's no Dutch option, so you know we're not gonna we're not gonna get there. Uh, okay, so let's give it the so it needs it needs the URL, so let's do that. Oh, let's give it JSON, and then we need a so we're gonna copy. So let's copy this from the uh, from here. So you just went to the code, Jen, to see the uh, URL with the value substituted in. Yeah, that's the. Is that is there a better way to do that? That's okay. how I would have done it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's that's how I would do it as well. I basically want this URL that we generated here before, but I want to kind of fill in this variable. Um, we use this variable because we have a couple of like we have some uh, de internal developers use this on like their, their developer instance as well. Uh, and then I want to replace this file ID with that file ID. So I, I can right. just go code here and just sneak sneakily kind of like copy this. And then if we go back to the Microsoft API, I'm going to paste that URL in here. So Microsoft can basically go and read that URL and kind of just start reading that as they as they um, as they need to. So if I send this, I hope. Oh no, we haven't actually provided any authorization. I'm guessing this is going to give us a 401, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, okay, authorization. Uh, Authorize API key, key. Oh, so it needs, this is a header. And then we need to actually stop doing that. So uh, secure. Uh, Cognitive services, keys and endpoints. There we go. There's our key. So let's fill that in as a header, right? So key, copy that one. Again, don't worry. I'm going to reset all of these later. Uh, quick, get your 5,000 API calls a minute uh, in right now. Sorry, per day. That worked. Ooh. So what do we get? We get outdoor, grass, person, ground, clothing, wedding dress. Was there a wedding dress in the photo? Oh, it was a wedding suit. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Man, bride, somehow he thinks there's a bride in there. Funeral. So you can see like there's a different confidence with each one of them. Um, How come there's not a sewing <coughs> machine in there? I feel like sewing machine is one of the most prominent aspects. I, that's fascinating, right? I was hoping it would know that there's a so. I picked this because I thought this is a weird enough photo with weird <laughs> enough stuff in it. It's going to pick up sewing machine, but it somehow doesn't pick up on sewing machine. Uh, it's also interesting, like it has all these like confidences to it. So like it, it, it gives you kind of an idea of how sure it is that. We're pretty sure you know, it's outside. It's a, pretty sure it's outside, but it has how a pretty How is police not in there? Weren't there police people in there? I think because they're in the background. It's mm. interesting, yeah. Uh, so we can play around with this and we can change this to, uh, what, are, what other things did we have in here? We had objects or not, was that another one? Let's try that one. Was it? No, that, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought, oh yeah, objects is a thing. Plural. Oh, there we go, typo. Ooh. So now it's giving us oh, coordinates. Like, uh, yeah, it's giving us the rectangles, right? So it's saying at like oh. X by here, to, and then this width, this height, I'm seeing a person. So it's basically saying there's a person at 49 pixels to 82, and then a width of 35 and a height of 110. Another person, another person. So it's at least seeing three people. A car, which it thinks is a land vehicle. I mean. It's in the river almost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then another person. So it's seen four people in a four people in a car, which there's five in a car. So it's you know, it's okay. Uh, cool. So that works. That's pretty quick to be honest. 
like for how quickly those API responds. That was like what? That's like 1.3 seconds. Yeah. And if I uh, get an API response on that. And I think the majority of that is probably like downloading the file from Box, like just getting the uh, the data for them to get the data from Box. So that's pretty good. Is there any like sentiment analysis? I was thinking like, I, I think I wrote the title of this, like snooping on my coworkers um, box file. <laughs> Cause I wanted to see what types of things like Arlami, Arlami is really big into making memes and yeah. I assume he saves them all so he can like bask in his former glory. But like if his memes are typically like this type of sentiment or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's what this API does. It does like, uh, it, it basically gives you these kind of like options for like a hot dog, not hot dog. Yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't do like a, a hot dog, not hot dog. I guess, I guess if we, let's try this, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> like if we find an image, uh, image of a hot dog, uh, right? We, we grab that image. Oh. I feel like this is um, where I was going to ask people to submit their own pictures, but I feel like this is getting in a risky territory. <laughs> but uh, Arlami uh, does want us to, does it detect a celebrity in that picture? You, you want me to try that one? Yeah, that was Let, let's optional, upload, let's, right? Yeah, let's upload a, like a couple of different ones, right? So I have, to, I have a, two celebrities in here and a hot dog. So let's, let's first see. Let's first see the big question that lit <laughs> that lingers on, you know, that, that we haven't answered yet. Does it? Can it detect a hot dog? <laughs> I think that's, this is a very important question. So let's get this right. So we need to grab the uh, the read access token, which is this one. So we're going to throw that in the body here. Let's see access token there, and then we need the file ID. Uh, which is under source, right, that's uh, here. And then what we're asking is, I, I'm a bit, I'm a bit confused as to what the difference is between like categories and, and, and like object, objects that gives you the, the location. I think categories and tags, it doesn't, let's do tags again. I like that one. Dog, hot. Fast food, hot dog. Hot dog, confident. <laughs> I feel like that confidence isn't quite as high as the image that you selected. It's pretty obviously a hot dog. <laughs> I, I think if we made a, if we made a, uh, if we would train our own model, right, with just like pictures of hot dogs, then we would probably get a higher score. Uh, uh, right. One of the. One What's of the, the confidence for the dog? Arlami wants to know. For dog. Dog. The confidence for dog is like seven nines, one, six nines. Yeah. Uh, there is not a dog in this uh, in this picture, so I'm not sure why it came to dog. That's the difference between machines and humans. Humans know that dog is not hot dog. Machines like, yep, yep definitely dog. Yeah. So let, let, let's show what we can do now if we want to push this back, right? So we can um, sandwich. We can uh, uh, skills. Let's see. So we can create box skills on a card. So basically, this API for box basically takes the same file ID. So we're going to have to copy that from uh, from here, right? And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to basically write a lot of these tags to the to the body. So um, this is a bit of an auto-generated body. We don't need all of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to write a keyword a cart, right? And, uh, Cristiano, I know, I know you said this already, but do you have to get a new access token for every file ID? Uh, yes, the right to write for like specifically that file, you have to use the access token, the right access token, which we're going to copy in a moment. Uh, it's basically this, like when when the webhook comes into to um, uh, to to whatever endpoint is being called. There's basically two webhooks in here. One of them is for reading the file, and then the other one is for writing, which is another access token. And that's very much restricted to writing kind of metadata only to that file and not Got to it. any other file and not reading files. So it's it's kind of 
um, it's kind of the token that's kind of used at the end of the loop to kind of like write whatever you get from the machine learning API back to box, back okay. to the metadata. Um, so I'm doing a bit of uh, kind of uh, cleaning up here, right? So we have a, a skill called uh, image recognition, right? This isn't actually right. This is wrong. Okay. Uh, I forgot to update the uh, Postman collection clearly. Uh, let's see. So we have a, an invocation. So we have a skill card. Uh, so we, we, we can provide actually multiple different kinds of cards. So we have a couple of different skill cards. We have keywords, we have a timeline, we have a transcript. Uh, those are pretty much the, the, the three key ones. So I'm going to use the key, the keyword one. Uh, so I need to give that skill a name. So I'm going to say this is an image recognition service, or as you said, it's a hot dog, not hot dog service, right? Uh, and then we need to provide uh, we need to provide a ID of like the actual like endpoint. So we can basically say this is you know hot dog service one. Uh, so if you have like multiple endpoints, potentially multiple kind of nodes handling this. You could potentially later on kind of identify, hey, where where did this metadata exactly exactly come from? Uh, we don't need a duration because this is not a video. We didn't analyze the duration, and then we have a list of entries. Sorry, my JSON was slightly incorrectly nested. You know, there's a beautify button in the right, although you're doing a great job manually formatting that JSON. Done, done, <laughs> fixed. So we can take these uh, we can take these these keys that we got back from here, right? And we can basically like take all these keys and write them back. So in this case, we we would want to write back that it's a hot dog, uh, and we can we can give this any kind of list of entries. Uh, so we could say it's it's food, you know. So this is this is what we would get back from the the machine learning API, uh, and uh, um, bun, uh, right? Uh, so the only thing that this needs is that that access token, the right access token. So I'm going to copy that quickly, and I'm going to use that in my authorization here. And I'm going to that all looks good. And if I send that off, then I get a metadata object back. So this this is pretty much the same data that we put in, but there's basically an instance of metadata that's been created on that. Um, on that file, so it has those three kind of entries on it. So if we go back and we go into the hot dog and we click here on the side, we can now see that there's a topics of hot dog, food, bun, kind of automatically kind of attached to this. And those so tags can, are searchable by default. Yeah. So if I go if I go into here and I do need to give that a heart, uh, it's gonna well, it's gonna find that. In there, but for example, button isn't in there. It should be in there. I think our index is having a. We we recently changed our um, our metadata backend, and I realized that this demo account is not upgraded to the new version yet. Uh, in a new version, this would be instant. Uh, now it's taking like two or three minutes for this oh, to show. batch it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, embarrassing. Yeah. I forgot to upgrade my own account. Uh, yeah, but that that should show up in the search. We, we can check this later. Uh, it should be in there. Matavik says uh, uh, they actually copy stuff into Postman just for the beautify button. <laughs> it's a new use case. It's a, it's a, it's an important use case. Uh, it's one of my pet peeves, uh, kind of badly, badly, uniform, uh, badly formatted, Jason. Um, the the question is, we're going to start a war if we're going to ask how many spaces this should be in you, Jason. I mean, that's that's going to be it's going to be a hot topic. I'm waiting for somebody to say how many. <laughs> um, so I think we should tie this together. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it again. Okay. So uh, I am going to spin up a new project, right? Uh, 
I'm very much a command line person. Let's see. Uh, make their demo. That's what you told me before you started using Postman. I, li I still like Postman just for like, uh, because it basically, like this, the thing I especially love Postman for is, um, you know, maintaining our your API credentials in, in a command line environment is an absolute pain. Mm, yeah. And it's so much easier. Like the way we've set it up with our own collection now is, is so much easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna initialize a, initialize a, an npm a node project. There we go. So we just have a an empty package JSON, right? Uh, and basically, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of things. I'm gonna let me make this a bit bigger. This is a bit. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna add. Um, what I'm going to add, I'm going to add uh, two things. I'm going to add Express, which is our web server, and I'm going to add uh, Axios, which is kind of a library for making making API calls. What so shell is, is that? Is that ZSH? That's Z shell, yes. Yeah, it's just oh my Z shell with like a lot of uh, adjustments to it. Shadowed yeah. autocomplete? Shadowed, okay. oh, oh yeah, this is like you know, it just gives you like, it, it basically pulls from your history and it shows you just the last thing that kind of matches that, oh. that thing. That, so like you, you see that the last thing I did was try to pseudo as, as a super user because sometimes you need to be the super user to kind of get stuff done. Uh, <laughs> um, so uh, let's make our actual app, right? So I make an app. Uh, so let's do this. So um, I'm gonna, I have the express kind of uh, code on my right here because I'm always a bit not sure why my one password decided to pop up. There we go. Okay, so let's import uh, express, right? So we're gonna spit up a, 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 an express server. Uh, so you do that by importing express and you can see I can't type. Uh, and we're gonna create an app and then we're gonna use, because what we're gonna use here is uh, um, JSON, right? We're, we want to automatically parse the JSON that comes in. There's, so we a don't typo, have to there's a typo on row one with Express. Spada, thank you. Uh, and then let's set the port right to uh, 8,000, right? And then if we did, now, you, now we can just basically, uh, if for anybody not familiar with Express, it's basically a really nice kind of like simple kind of like tool for like spinning up a web server. So I can say, oh, um, when somebody hits slash, just the root, we get the request, the response, and then uh, we can do a couple of different things. In this case, I could say response.send um, uh, status, okay. Right, and if I spin up the uh, listen to the port, right? If we run this now, we'll have a a little server running on on port eight thousand. If we go to eight thousand, state is okay. Okay, so that's that's kind of like our our little web server, right? Okay. Um, now, there's two things I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just quickly installing NodeMon, which means I don't have to restart my server every time I change something. I'm going to do NodeMon app, right? And the second thing I'm going to do is use my ngrok to basically spin up a tunnel. So now we have a, a public IP that we can use. So we have this, you know, random ID tunnel that beta.io, which is my my site. And it gives us the same the same server, so we can see we can see this kind of coming coming in here. Um, uh, this is running ngrok for anybody not familiar with ngrok. This is what we're using here. One one of the cool things we can do here as well is kind of see uh, kind of like the request coming in, so we can see the the request coming in. So what what we need to do is we need to provide that same URL. So this URL, the tunnel that beta.io, we need to give that to our skill. Here we go. So that's an invocation URL. So this needs to be an HTTP 
as URL. Uh, we save this. And then we can say retest. And we can see in ngrok that we now receive the post, right? Post to slash with that same kind of like body that we've kind of been playing with today. So awesome. So now we can start parsing this and using this in our, uh, in our, in our API, right? So let's do this. Let me know if I'm going too fast, uh, Joyce. No, this that's one. good. This is the second time we've used ngrok, and I'm not familiar with it. And I think I should learn because that was so easy for you to set up. And also, you pronounce it ngrok, whereas Arlami pronounces it ngrok. I've, to be fair, I have no idea how it's supposed to be pronounced. That's the way I I would pronounce it. Uh, he might well be right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah Mad so Madovic is commenting on how fast you spun that together. Yeah, that was like. Mm. It's like you're a professional. I love Ngrok. Uh, I'm running my own Ngrok daemon on my own server that I can connect to and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of nice. It, it works. It means I don't have to like, uh, yeah, that's why I've got my own kind of like custom domains and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it, it is, is, it's very useful when you're dealing with kind of like these webhooks. <laughs> I really want to explore the Postman stuff though, because it, it sounds like it's really used for like debugging which is often right, like you don't necessarily want to debug in like a full code environment. Uh, so I'd love to like give that a try. I need to, I need to look at that because I, I didn't know that Postman had the ability to kind of like accept incoming webhooks and then use that in the body for like the next API calls that you're making through Postman because that's what it does, right? I, I did understand that, right? Yeah, and um, just to your persona, it's not very well documented, which is why we had a live stream on it. So we'll we'll get we'll get working on our end. Okay. So let's uh, let's do something cool with this, right? So let's uh, um, um, so the the body that we that that is sent in the in the request will be in request body. So we'll, we'll get that in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna. Uh, um, uh, do something like uh, um, we're going to analyze. We're going to write a new function that's basically going to analyze uh, this uh, this body, and because that's basically going to make an API call externally, we're going to wait for that API call to come back. We're going to do that asynchronously, right? And then what we can do is we can basically then res uh, send a uh, a response back, much like we've done here, like basically afterwards reply back to the uh, the box skill and say, you know, done. The the box skill webhook doesn't expect any body back, but it's kind of nice to kind of like at least return a status back. So we're gonna we're gonna do a bit of a an analyze uh, uh, analyze the data. And then we can say console.log. Uh, so we're gonna output the data here, right? Oop, accidentally collapsed this. So let's write a function. So uh, we're going to call that uh, analyze, which is a new async function, which is going to take the body, right? And then we're going to have to do a couple of things. So we need that URL that we had from, um, uh, I guess we're going to have to make an API call to, to, um, uh, to uh, the, uh, the Microsoft API. So let's go back to, here, right? So we need this this URL, right? So let's say const URL equals yeah, that seems right. And then we need our key, which is also in here somewhere. Where do we put it? Header. There we go. Uh, put this in here. Is that the value? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we need to build the file URL, right? So we need to kind of like build that file URL that we're, we're, we're which we're going to pass to uh, the Microsoft API. Uh, so we had that in here as well. So let's see, that's somewhere here in the body. So that looks something like this. But we're going to we're going to kind of replace this parts of this, right? So I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So right now we have we have this whole access token in here, right? 
And we're going to replace that with the actual access token. And we're going to replace the file ID with the actual file ID that uh, that comes back from the that's in the body. So the body, the the webhook makes an API call. All the all the data is in there. We just need to extract it. So the file ID is the body that source that ID. So it's the idea of the source, the thing that triggered the webhook. Mm -hmm. uh, the access token is uh, body dot token dot uh, read dot access token. So it's basically the, the read only access token that we want to use. So with this in place, we can make the API call, right? So we make a we'll make an API call and save that as a result. Uh, so I'm going to use Axios. So I do need to import that, which I think it's just done. That's weird. That's not how this should look. Should look like that. Um, Axios that post. So we need to post to the uh, to the, the the URL from Microsoft, right? And then we're going to post in uh, some data. So we're going to post in. We're going to post in the URL, right? And we're going to pass in some extra headers, uh, which in this case is uh, one header with a name of some really convoluted name, OCP yeah. APIM subscription key. Seems right along. And we can set that to, uh, to the key. Uh, oh, we need to pass the file URL in as the URL, not the, not the so this is the endpoint URL. Let's name them a little bit better. Endpoint URL, right? So this makes an API call. It posts. It does the same thing we did in Postman. It makes that post call with the URL, uh, and it adds in the headers. Uh, there's still a mistake here. What am I doing? Is it supposed to be an object? Uh, I don't. Think so. Um, yeah, it does have to be an object. Yeah, good because it's key map. Okay, and we can return the result data. So we want to get the data back and return that back to the uh, to this endpoint. So what this is going to do is when when this post call is made, uh, we'll analyze it, we'll get the data back, and then we'll we'll print it out. So one of the things that's nice of um, nice of this ngrok is you can kind of hit replay. So if I hit replay here, I got a 200 back. So I got a, uh, it posted the same data and I got status done. So nothing seems that failed here. And if we go to our uh, node terminal, we can see that we got all of this. Oh. Back. So we got, we got all this stuff, all these tags back. So what we need to do is we need to extract those tags and write those to to our box API, right? So let's write a new function called write. Uh, what, what should we call this? Write uh, keywords, right? Um, and we need to pass in again. We need to pass in the request body so that we can use the the token that we got in the request body to write back to the API. And let's pass in that data. Uh, and let's wait for that to finish as well before we kind of send a response to 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 the um, back. Yeah, to have this endpoint kind of send a response. So let's see, new function, write keywords. It takes in a body and the data that we receive from Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. So there's there's two things we need to do now. One of them is we're going to need to write the data to box, right? So the box URL for this is um, is kind of this endpoint that we played with earlier. This one, so we can copy that one in here. Um, but again, we need to replace a few things in here. We need to use the file ID again, and we've done that up here. So that's the body source ID. So this says like, hey, write the metadata. The box skill cards metadata to this file, uh, and then we 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 also need some headers with this one just to to authenticate. Um, uh, we we use a we use just a normal authorization header uh, with like this uh, a bearer token, and the bearer token is what is it body dot. Uh, token.write.access dot dot token. 
So this is the one that allows us to write the metadata back. Uh, and then we're gonna post that, right? So we're gonna post that. So we're gonna use Axios again, do post, post to the box URL. Um, and then we need some kind of request body that we need to create still, uh, as well as uh, uh, headers, All right? So those are those are our headers. Uh, so this will basically send to that URL, send the body uh, with the authentication. So the other thing we need to do is kind of like create create that request body. So I'm going to copy that again from what we did here. So I'm going to copy that over. Uh, so we're going to pull up. It's basically an object that has a list of cards. So we're only doing one here. It's going to keyword. It's a hot dog, not hot dog service. And then we need to pass in the, the kind of the entries here. So as you can see that that data object is basically a data object with tags, and then it has a list with each one has a name. So what we can do, right, we, we can take that same object. So what did I call it? I called it data. So data.tags, and then I'm just gonna map each entry to an entry that kind of maps the, 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 the format that I, I need. So we have a tag, so uh, a tag basically represents kind of like this this line, but we only need kind of the name, and we need to assign that to a key of text. So what we're going to return for each one of these is a new object with text equals tag dot name. Right, and you can also conditionally map it too, like if the confidence was low, but it looks like confidence is fairly high for all these. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can, we can, we can basically say it needs to be at least. Uh, I mean, the way I would do that is filter uh, by confidence, right? So I would say like filter this by confidence, and then I just write a new function down here, which we call by confidence. So that's going to take in an uh, attack, right? And then we're going to say uh, return. So we, we want to return whether or not the confidence is higher than a certain value. So tag.confidence is higher than 0 0.8. Otherwise, we're going to get a lot of tags on this object. So that's probably a good idea. All right? So filter by confidence. So we say we take all of these tags, filter them down, and then we map them to a list of objects. Um, so I think this should work. So if I give this a if this I, if I give this a try again, if I hit replay. Did that give us an error? Ooh, that gave us an error. Ah, this is not an async method. This needs okay. to be an async method for us to use a wait in here. Okay, I'll give this a try again. Probably another error. Uh, request fail restore for status goes 409. Uh, so I think <laughs> what's what's happened here is uh, when you try to write metadata to a file that already has metadata, it, it basically fails over. It suddenly uh, uh, it, it won't let you do that. Uh, now it's it's really easy for us to kind of easily just remove the metadata from that file. So what we just need to do is just kind of take that same uh, um, uh, let's see. Can't you just update it? The update is kind of like a patch update, which is a bit much to do during this call. So let me do, let me do it like this. Basically, update the authorization, and then uh, we need the uh, we need the file ID, which is this one. Um, there we go. Sent. Cool. I got us a 204 no content, which means that it's been removed. So if we hit replay, 200 OK, right? And didn't crash, which means if we go back to our file, and I think this was the hot dog one, we give this a refresh, we now have all of these tags assigned. Dessert. Mm. Yeah. Getting so, so hungry. 
Okay, so let's let's finish this up, right? I think we're we're, we're almost there. The, the one the one thing I want to show you is that you can kind of tie all of this together. So I'm gonna I'm gonna basically register this skill that we have um, to basically be automatically linked when when it's kind of like uploaded to, to a certain folder. So this is where I need the client ID of the skill. Uh, so I'm the I'm the admin in this enterprise. So normally you can't just start processing every file in an enterprise because that's potential security issues if somebody randomly starts doing that. So an admin kind of needs to approve this. Uh, so the way we do this is we can kind of say which folders is this tied to. Um, so we, we can say the media folder in Cristiano's account. So this will say, hey, the media files in Cristiano's account, when something's uploaded to that. Yep, enable. Cool. So now if we upload a new folder, so if let's see, we find a new photo of a hot dog, like let's steal a different one. Get an ambiguous hot dog. Am ambiguous hot dog. What yeah. is an ambiguous hot Something dog? Something that doesn't really look like a hot dog, just to test the AI. <laughs> hot dog. Uh, Wait, this is, this is, this is really risky. <laughs> I, I yeah I, I I I know let's let's not do that. Uh, oh, like this one. Like let's see what it okay. figures out for this one. There's so much covered on this one that. Uh, so if we upload this one, we sh should see. So this is uploading, and then we should see in a couple of seconds. We should see this refresh. So this goes uh, got a 200 OK. So this went all the way through. Got a 200. And if we click on this now, we can see that it's found fast food, food, plate, table, dog, hot, baked goods, indoor, and snack food. It's not nice. found quite hot dog, but it's still found dog, which makes no sense. And hot, <laughs> <Well>. yes. <laughs> it's found the, the individual words, but not, I'm not sure what's going on here uh -oh. with, the, with the search. It should be finding it. I'm confused by this. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's the. Uh... That's really neat. So something that um, we do at Postman is we have really cute, um, like creative. We have like the Postman, like the Postmanot. We have like the little dog. We have like really cute creative. And um, the design assets right now are just scattered like all over. And sometimes it's hard to search. But if I run this through it, especially training it and saying like, I definitely want to know if it's Cooper the dog or if it's like whatever, this would help mm -hmm. optimize that search experience. Exactly, exactly. And if you, uh, you can use it for, you can basically use it for a couple of different things. You can either train your own models, especially if you're like searching for specific content, or you can like, um, you can use these kind of generic kind of off the shelf solutions to just, you know, get, get at least like uh, a baseline kind of understanding of what's happening. Hey, Cristiano. Will we do? Can you do one thing for me that's not at all incremental to this live stream? But uh, Arlami found a safe, not hot dog. Can you upload this one? Do you see okay. it in the chat? Which chat? The Twitch chat. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me find this one. Right. So, <laughs> uh, let me let me try this one. I think it's quite a low low rest photo. So uh, once again, Arlami is our resident machine learning expert. And in his expert um, experience, this is going to be really like testing the bounds of this machine learning model. So I think this came through already. Uh, sometimes it goes so quickly that you're like, has this happened yet? Yeah, how it is has. it so fast? Ooh. So it hasn't found hot, but it has found dog. And for the first time today, it's found dog for a picture of an actual dog. An actual dog. <laughs> Nice. nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm. So, I'm always surprised how quick this goes. Like you upload something and like that, it's like it's there. Like I didn't even have time to wait for it to appear in my yeah. in my logs here. Yeah. Cool. This was more straightforward than I thought it would be. That went yeah. Like we actually have extra time. So if anybody is in, this is cutting edge, Matavik. Um, if anybody is in the chat and wants to see us do some last minute adjustments to the model, to the project. How, how much, how much time do we have still? We have 15 minutes. Okay, 
because because the, the the other thing that we could do is try because because they do have an API for like celebrities, so we can like change the code to kind of see if it can deal with celebrities. Dog celebrities. <laughs> Dog celebrities. Oh, because it it can mark celebrities. So the question is like, can it find Grumpy Cat or like something like that? Is I know it's a, a it's a cat, celebrity? not a dog. I, I don't know. <laughs> you definitely know who it is. So, like, potentially. Let's some, do it. We have time. Right, we need to save, like, we need to save a few minutes for community shout outs, but um, let's do it. Okay, so let's, let's first upload, like, uh, so I think I already added a celebrity in here, right? So I think we have, uh, we have Tom Hanks in here. Ball right. ring. And we have uh, okay. Rihanna here. Yeah. Or, or do you want me to go straight for Grumpy Cat? Add Grumpy Cat. <laughs> straight, straight on Grumpy Cat. Okay, that, that's it. Let's see. Uh, I mean, he is, she is famous. Um, is Grumpy Cat still alive? No. Oh. So, uh, I think she passed away last year. Oh, come on. I didn't copy the file correctly. See, I hear I stocked up on some images before the call, thinking I better have some images <laughs> for us to analyze. And I'm just constantly Googling for different. Oh, that's a web P one. I don't think we, I'm not sure if the uh, thingy, the, the Microsoft API supports web P or not. Probably does. Mm, potentially doesn't. It's a kind of a Google technology, right? Oh. So here we go. So we have Grumpy. Grumpy. Yeah. So let's uh, close that one. I have a bit too many tabs open. Let me let me close a few. Okay. Uh, oh no, this is the one we need. Don't need that one. Okay. Right, so if we let's give this a try first, right? So if we select the file. Right, it would say media files. Um, and we do grumpy. Right, we get this body. So we get this access token. So I'm gonna copy the access token. Let's let's directly kind of like try to use this in this API rather than uh, necessarily updating our code. Uh, so the body. All right, let's update the body, update the, come on. Update the access token in here. We need the file ID, so the source ID. So if we send this, now we should get back animal, mammal, domestic cat. So let's see how this, how this whole celebrity thing works. So it's an optional details celebrities. So details celebrities. So if we uh, parameter details celebrities. Animal cat, domestic cat tags. Animal eyes. So I'm, I'm confused as to what this is supposed to work with, like which of these. I'm confused. Why is it a separate parameter? Is it because it has to check a different model? Yeah. I like don't it's... No, I think it's additional details onto on top of what it finds. So we now have it set to tags, right? So maybe brands, like. Is a celebrity a subset of brand? No. Uh, well, maybe we said it's animals. Maybe animals aren't celebrities. Like in Pro this. Thing. Probably, that's that. Could be. <laughs> could be. Uh, I've I have no idea. Let's let's see if it can uh, if it can detect. Uh, um, uh, one of our other celebrities. Our known uh, known commodities. No. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember which one this was. So this will be surprised. 
Uh, there we go. Copy that into the body. That's the access token. And then uh, the source ID, which is this. Uh, so send this off. Celebrities, Rihanna, let's figure it out. With a low confidence. Well, lower than some of those higher. Well, positions. yeah. I mean, it's it's shown it it's shown it, so yeah, it works. It works. It works. works. So yeah, you you could theoretically like uh, figure out if there's any celebrities in your uh, in your photos in your books account. Yeah, it's really useful. Okay, so is there anything else you wanted to cover today before we get to community shout outs, Cristiano? Um, or the, in the chat, if you guys have questions or um, anything that you want to ask about machine learning, because we're the machine learning experts here, and uh, anything about box, that kind of stuff. So the, 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 I'm happy to take any questions that people have uh, in, uh, uh, in, in, in the chat. Uh, the one thing I wanted to call out is we have... Um, on developer.box.com, we have a Postman quick start. So it's a use Postman to make API calls with Box kind of quick start. Uh, it, there's a video attached to it. It takes you all the way through kind of like setting up your, your first Box app and then kind of using Postman, uh, using Box within your Postman. And it basically means that at the end of it, uh, you'll have the entire kind of Box Postman collection, which has like 185 endpoints currently, as well as like your credentials, your environment kind of like completely set up so that you, you never have to like do like kind of the whole like copying your access token like I've done today with the uh, Microsoft API. You, you never really have to do that again because you can basically just keep making API calls. So that's like my, my one kind of plug for today is like if you want to play with Box, you want to play with the API, it's a good starting point. Yeah, and that was actually going to be my community shout out <laughs> because um, I think uh, as as you mentioned at the beginning of the stream, Christiana, you said somebody else like a predecessor had created an original collection and it was getting a lot of uh, tra it's getting a lot of downloads or whatever, but it wasn't being kept up to date. If you have Postman open, can you show people where to uh, pull in uh, just the the bare collection? So there's two versions of the collection. One is if you're logged in to your developer box developer portal. Um, I think we went back and forth a couple times on your, um, as you were documenting that collection, uh, because documentation, like tearing down documentation is your thing. So you wanted it to be good. Um, mm -hmm. So you you actually, like if you're logged in, you poke in your credentials. That's actually, November, um, Sailor, if you're still on the line, I think you had this question earlier this week, but um, some examples of good documentation is just making it as seamless as possible. So if I'm already logged in to this developer box um, portal, like why would I have to, don't make me copy and paste, just poke those tokens in is, is actually a perfect example of good documentation. Yeah, yeah, we don't have fully that feature yet. Um, we're, we're currently working on something where we wanna like kind of busily put your credentials straight into the documentation. There's a little bit of a step in between, but this whole thing basically takes you through setting up your box app. Uh, and then it explains to you how to set up your, your box application in the dev console. And essentially what we're trying to do next is like make this whole step, this step, which is currently like nine points, make that like one, <laughs> uh, where you just select from a dropdown, you select which application you're trying to add into, uh, into your, um, uh, uh, into your uh, Postman app. Uh, and then as it takes you through kind of like setting this up at the end of it, you'll have the, the collection set up with the whole demo environment. You can use the collection that we have without, the, with the, without your environment set up. It's just a lot harder because you basically have to go in, get a one-time access token, use that for an hour. And then as soon as like that expires every hour, you have to like get a new token, a new developer token and set that up again. So the thing that we made easier is a couple of things. Like, first of all, we, we, we made a quick start guide that takes you through setting up an app that belongs to you that is set up correctly so that you can kind of load these credentials into your Postman app. But the second thing that we did is uh, we used a lot of these, like um, uh, the, the scripts that we talked about earlier. Like each one of these methods basically has a script in it and it checks whether or not your uh, your credentials are expired and then it auto refreshes them for you. 
So our access tokens are valid for like 60 minutes normally. Um, but because there's also a refresh token associated in your environment, it can basically, after 60 minutes, it can just like get a new access token. And as long as you keep using Postman like once every 60 days, I think, uh, it will always kind of like be able to use that refresh token to refresh uh, your access token. Uh, does, so you that, never have does that run before every request? So it checks whether or not the expired idea has, has happened. Yeah. Right. So it runs like before every request that you make and then kind of like just in time kind of like does a, that swaps out your access token for you. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a way to turn that off. And then you can basically go into authorization and you can say refresh access token, run that, and it will just do the same thing. Uh, and we have a question here. Um, well, a comment, Medivic says, uh, this is the first time being exposed to ML stuff. So this was an intro um, to machine learning. November Sailor asks, any plans to support managing skill configs through the API? Uh, it's a very good question. So we're, we're currently uh, reworking um, uh, a lot of our um, um, developer dashboard. So uh, if you go to basically this dashboard um, that we have here, this hasn't really been updated from a look and feel in many years. It's kind of out of date with like a lot of the rest of our web app. We're currently reworking this. And as part of that, like we're building basically like internal APIs for pretty much everything, including like how do you set up a skill? Uh, so the nice thing is that skills will exist. We don't currently have plans to kind of expose those APIs um, uh, as kind of like platform APIs that we can expose to, to customers. But I'd love to know like why you would want to do that because it's not that we don't want to do it, it's just it hasn't made it to the priority list. So there's two ways to get this higher on the priority list. Uh, one of them is we have uh, this website called pulse.box.com. So pulse.box.com. Box.com. This is basically our uh, kind of like community feedback form. So if you want this, put this in there and get get your idea on the roadmap. Our product team actively reads this. Uh, the other one is uh, email me uh, cbeta at box.com, and I'm happy to like uh, uh, have more of this conversation because I'd love to know why you're doing it with it and why this is something you want. Cool. So I I have do one more community shout out. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And if anybody has any questions for uh, Cristiano, go ahead and plop it in the chat. But let me, how do I share my screen? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, so I have one besides the box collection that Cristiano um, just really worked hard on, and it's a really great example of good documentation. I have uh, one more community shout out. So hopefully you see maybe my screen. Uh, uh, yeah, now we are, I think, yes. Okay, so I am here in the, um, the community forum. We've come here quite a bit. So under community showcase, this is a place where, Cristiano, actually you can go ahead and post something here if you want. Um, but if you ha are somebody that built something that is neat for the Postman community, go ahead and post it here. Um, this one is by, I haven't actually looked at this tutorial yet, but look, there's already like some clicks on it, but, um, it's containerization of Postman collection using Docker. So Kathanga, Kathanga, um, Kathanga, Kathanga, uh, has been, um, publishing tutorials. And if you're like, that sounds cool. I want to learn how to do it. Go ahead and, um, check it out. And if you build something, um, post it here in the community showcase. Um, so I think with that, let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, with that, I think we're at the end of our time together. That sounds so dramatic. Um, <gasps> I know, but, uh, Christiana, what's the best way to keep in touch with you? You just gave everyone your email address. We have your Twitter handle here. Generally my Twitter, my DMS are open. So feel free to like reach out on me there. Uh, I'm also available on email. Uh, that's, I mean, I'm a developer advocate. That's kind of the role is to, to be open for, for any of you to, to reach out to us and, and, and tell us, uh, what you need us to do with the APIs next. We're, we're pretty much as close as like a direct line to like the product team you can get at box. Uh, so, so, um, yeah, feel free to reach out via Twitter or email. Feel free to slide into his DMs, um, but otherwise, 
next week we have another special guest. It's going to be about gaming. So if you're curious about gaming or making games, we have a special guest. I won't say who it is, but tune in next Thursday. Otherwise, thank you for staying late uh, this Thursday, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.